malign portents. The gods take notice. Upstretched the throne of skulls. Up and up again, an impossible mountain of heads claimed in the blood god's name. At its peak, far beyond such notions as sanity and cosmic law, was a monolithic and ornate throne of brass. And atop this structure sat the being that men call Corn. He brooded, his loathing so intense it crackled around him to blacken the air. There was sorcery on the wind. He could smell its foul stench over the familiar scents of boiling blood, scorched bone and red-hot metal. Sorcery, the last refuge of cowards, cheats and weaklings. Corn's cavernous nostrils flared once more in his blood-stained snout. Yes, the stink was becoming stronger. Corn bit into his own claw, a fang like an iceberg drawing divine blood. He rubbed the liquid between his calloused fingers, with a sound like a distant earthquake, and drank in the scent once more. His mind was filled with pleasing visions of skulls, more numerous than ever before, stretching far out into the distance. Skulls, twice reaped, thrice even, all buried, exhumed, and claimed again in his name. But no blood. In this vision, even the brackish, clotted blood of the risen corpse dried out and turned to dust. Endless ranks of skeletal forms marched, some headless, some armoured, some monstrous, yet all acting in perfect synchronicity as they fought one another with clockwork, emotionless movements. There was no fury here, no righteous anger, none of the red vital fluid that flowed in rivers to please him, to invigorate him, to allay his unquenchable thirst. Only magic. Corn snarled, taking up a vast brazen skull from the foot of his throne and crushing it into a billion splinters with his fist before hurling them out into reality where they would lodge into the minds of mortals and ensure this vision would not come to pass. There would be a great deal of blood spilt every day in his name. Oceans of it. The great architect's fractal mind span and whirled as his countless consciousnesses warred, riddled, made pacts with and betrayed each other. Like some cosmic kaleidoscope, it refracted reality over and over as it confronted and folded in mind-boggling profusion. Along the crystal strands of thought the many minds roamed, ensuring victory here, undermining themselves there. Zench's needling mind fingers plucked at the skins like the legs of a demented arachnid, expertly changing the state of a thousand realities with every passing second. It happened slowly at first, but unmistakably, though some of those threads sung with fresh arcane possibilities under his gaze. Many of the strands that made up the tapestry of the future had become brittle. Some even broke as he observed them and turned to dust, unchanging and inert. Almost all of Zinch's minds felt a backlash of intense antipathy at the sight they led to a future, vast and growing ever more so, that consisted of order, predictability, and stasis. That appealing dystopia was far off, and yet undeniable in its potential. A great will was driving parts of the tapestry forward towards it. Strand by dusty strand. Keening in a hundred thousand mortal languages at once, Zeech reached out the needle talons of his mind and set to work. Grandfather Nurgle hummed softly to himself in the basement of his manse, stirring his cauldron with a ladle that could hold seven seas at once. He breathed in deeply, blighted lungs flapping within his long rotten chest, and he sighed in contentment. The bouquet of stenches rising from within was so strong it would kill a god-beast. But then, Brows like mountain ranges furrowed, their hillock pimples squirting pus into the multicoloured broth below. Something was just not right. The plague god raised the ladle to his ravaged, rubbery lips, 
and struck the tip of his long black tongue in the liquid. So very wonderfully foul, yet true enough there was something wrong with it. The bland taste of ashes filled his mouth. Ashes and lifeless dust. Below, the cauldron's broth began to turn grey, the steam rising from it thinning as it grew cold and congealed. Nurgle began to feel something akin to revulsion as he saw his cauldron surface as a landscape of dunes. Skeletal corpses marched across them in long columns. They were not properly alive, nor fertile ground enough to host smaller forms of life. Indeed, they boasted nary a maggot between them. Through the magic of another, they had been cut off from the glorious cycle of life and death, claimed by a force of horrible stasis that had no respect for entropy nor for true rebirth. The edge of the cauldron, fashioned in the guise of a snake consuming its own tail, started to shudder and writhe. The serpent choked, coughing up its cannibal's feast, and the cauldron began to spill Nurgle's concoction all over the floor of his mansion. Panicking, the Plague Father put his vast flabby hands on the edge of the cauldron, flesh sizzling as he tried to scoop the burning hot liquid back into place. Pushing his mountainous gut against the rim, eyes stinging with disbelief and confusion, he managed to stuff the cauldron snake's tail back into its maw and seal the rim together with a great gobber of his own sputum. He stood back, gasping after his sudden and unexpected exertions. Soon his anguish turned to fury, the fury of a patriarch who sees his dynasty threatened by something that would take his children away forever. <laughs> said Grandfather Nurgle, the word booming across the cosmos to unsettled stomachs and trouble bowels in every realm. Outside, in the gardens, threatening storm clouds gathered. Slanesh gave a moan like the music of the spheres, caught somewhere between the crippling agony and the blinding ecstasy as the tiniest whip of energy was drawn from within his essence. At the height of the spasming torture, at the zenith of sensation, he saw a flash of potential futures. The realm of dust, of bone, of lifeless nations remade and reordered to please one single soul. That ancient spirit was steeped in excess. Slanesh could feel its need, its megalomania, drawn towards obsessions that it could never escape. Something like a smile tugged at Slanesh's chain-pierced lips, but it soon faded. Where were the bacchanals in his name? Where were the pleasures of the flesh, the manic dancing, the false joy, the frenzied, desperate hunger? What victory could be called complete without riotous, extravagant celebration? To have a reality brought in thrall to one singular, overwhelming desire was not enough. It would... Slanesh could barely bring himself to conceive of the horror, thrashing in mad, bellowing panic against his penumbrial chains. It would... be dull... The great horned rat crawled between the hidden places of the void, his thirteen sky-scratching whiskers twitching as he stared down at the teeming multitude of Blight City. Their endeavours were pleasing to him, as they always had been. So many, now, it was hard even for him to keep track. Let the four take the brunt of the god-king's resurgence. The myriad swarm would continue to grow more powerful in the corners of each realm, burrowing through time and space to make ready for the great upheaval, even as his fellow dark gods and the pantheon of order expended their strength. When the time was right, he would turn the mortal realms to blighted wastelands fit only for glorious vermin, thereby rising through the chaos pantheon to make the other dark gods kneel before him. It was a solid plan, and the great horned rat was in no mind to change it. His whiskers twitched again, sending rippling auras of green-black energy cascading across the skies of the mortal realms. There was something coming. Its rippling in the smog-ridden miasma of Blight City was unmistakable. It was the touch of death, or rather, undeath, laced through with the arid tang of the desert tomb. Something that sought to contend for the same power he himself would rightfully claim. A rival! 
The great horned rat curled his lip, the glow of warp-fire and infernal industry glinting from colossal, chisel-like teeth that could sever realities. No rival would take his place on the ladder, no would-be godling would disrupt his ascension. He was the lord of pestilence, of vermin, and endless starving wastelands, and he had already suffered the sneers of the four for far too long. If the cosmos was to turn to utter ruin, it would be him, and him alone, that would ensure it. <laughs>